All right, welcome everybody to today's lesson on hemodynamics. This is gonna be part one in our series of lessons on hemodynamic principles and monitoring. My name is Eddie Watson, and I am gonna be your presenter for this series of lessons. And so let's go ahead and dive right in. So really, ultimately, you might be wondering, what exactly is hemodynamics? And if we take the word and we break it down into its components. It's broken down into heme, which means blood, and the second part of it is dynamis, which is movement. So essentially, hemodynamics is the movement of blood. And the importance of hemodynamics is something that plays a vital role in how our body works. Essentially, the, that movement of blood is what's going to determine at the tissue level how much perfusion that we're getting in order to bring in oxygen and nutrients as well as uh, taking away any excreted waste products. And ultimately, the purpose of this lesson is to really go through and talk about all the different basic principles that are involved in hemodynamics. We're going to talk about you know, your basic anatomy of the heart and how the blood flows through the entire system. We're going to talk about uh, the different components that we look at and what makes up our hemodynamics, as well as we're going to talk about some of the monitoring techniques that, that we use in order to have an idea of what a patient's hemodynamics are. And finally, we're going to talk about the different ways in which we can optimize a patient's hemodynamics in order to really maximize uh, the blood flow throughout their body. All right, and with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into our first section. And in this section, we're going to talk about the basic anatomy of the heart and the vascular system. The purpose of this, because I know all of you have had this in nursing school, you all have an understanding of uh, the heart and how blood flows, but this is just mainly going to be a review just to make sure that we're all speaking the same language. So to start off, I just want to go through and label a few of the key parts that are really going to be important as we, we talk about things here. So the first is going to be our right atrium. Then down here we have our right ventricle. Then kind of a little hidden up over here we have our left atrium. And then finally down here we have our left ventricle. And as we know, these are our four major chambers of the heart. Our atrium is what pumps and feeds blood into the ventricle, and then the ventricle is what pumps into the vasculature and moves it to the various parts of the body, depending which side of the heart we're talking about. And as we all know, blood will go from our right atrium to our right ventricle. From our right ventricle, it'll go to our lungs. From there, it returns back to our left atrium, which then feeds into our left ventricle. And finally, the left ventricle is the one that pumps the blood throughout the rest of the body. And one important thing to, to be aware of is, as we know, as the blood passes to and from one chamber of the heart, it passes through different heart valves. And these various heart valves are going to be really important for you to know because if somebody has certain insufficiencies or problems with these valves, it's going to cause problems with the way that the blood is flowing and will ultimately impact our hemodynamics. So as we go through and talk about our valves, as we talked about, the blood starts in the right atrium. And the first valve that we are going to pass through is this valve here, and this is going to be our tricuspid. From there, the blood is going to be in the right ventricle. And when the right ventricle contracts, it's going to pump the blood out through this valve here, which is going to be our pulmonic. From there, the blood will make its trip and come back into the left atrium, at which point the blood will then pass from the left atrium to the left ventricle through what we call the mitral valve. Sometimes you may also hear this referred to as the bicuspid valve. And then finally, once the blood is in the left ventricle, when it contracts, it will enter the aorta through the aortic valve. So again, if we think about the path the blood is going through, we're going to go from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle through the pulmonic valve, it's going to pass along, end up into the left atrium, at which point we're going to pass through the mitral valve into the left ventricle and finally out the aortic valve. 
And I know that the location of these particular valves can be confusing for some nurses, especially starting out. So it's really important that you just remember that series that they go through. Tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, aortic. TPMA. Tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, aortic. Now I want to talk about a few of the different vessels that play an important role in this flow of blood. The first is going to be the, the two largest veins that are responsible for returning the blood flow to the heart. Those you're going to find over on the left here, we have up at the top our superior vena cava, which is going to be returning blood from the head and the upper extremities. And then we have our inferior vena cava, which is essentially returning all of the blood from the rest of the body. There is one last little section here, I'm going to put it right about here, and this is our coronary sinus. And finally, this is the last bit of blood that is being returned to the right atrium uh, from all of the coronary vessels. And so after that, the blood is going to be ejected from the right side of the heart from the right ventricle out through the pulmonic valve, and it's going to enter into the pulmonary artery. Now an important distinction here is we are calling this an artery because the blood is going away from the heart, but this is still deoxygenated blood because it is on its way to the lungs, and this is why we have it drawn blue in this section here. From here, the blood is going to go to the lungs, it's going to pick up oxygen, deliver carbon dioxide, and there it's going to return back through a series of vessels over here we call the pulmonary veins. And again, these are veins because they are returning blood to the heart, but at this point they are oxygenated, so this is why we have it red here. And also note that we do have two sets of these pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. So we have ones that are going to and from the patient's left lung here, and then we have ones that are going to and from the patient's right lung over here. And so now the blood is in the left side of the heart. It will be ejected from the left ventricle via the aortic valve, and from there it's going to pass into the aorta. And this is where the blood is going to begin its travel to all the different parts of the body. And so just as one big review of the the whole flow of blood. We have the blood coming from the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus, which are emptying into the right atrium. It's then going to pass from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From there, it's going to be ejected out the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary arteries, which are going to travel to the left and right lungs. From there, the blood, the oxygenated blood at this point, is going to return via the left and right pulmonary veins into the left atrium. The blood is going to pass through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. And then finally, the left ventricle is going to eject that blood through the aortic valve into the aorta and throughout the rest of the body. All right, so let's look at things a little bit differently and have a little bit different picture of the hemodynamics and blood flow through the body. So here I have things set up a little bit different. You know, we have our the right side of our heart over here. So obviously our right atrium and our right ventricle. And then over on the other side, we have the left side of our heart. So again, we're going to have our left atrium and our left ventricle. And again, just to map out the flow of blood. So we have our superior vena cava, which is feeding in here. Also our inferior vena cava, which is feeding up here. And then lastly, our coronary sinus, which is also feeding into the right atrium. And all of this blood is going to move across our tricuspid valve into our right ventricle. From there, the right ventricle is going to contract. It's going to eject our blood out through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery. And from there, it's going to travel to the left and right lungs. This is now where, obvious, our blood is going to pick up oxygen and travel back and enter into the left atrium. From there, we're going to cross the mitral valve into the left ventricle. And then the left ventricle is going to contract and push the blood out the aortic valve and into the aorta. Now, once the blood is in the aorta, there's really three main ways that it can go. The first of these is to go up to our brain and upper extremities. It can also go and travel down and around to 
the rest of the body. And the last route that the blood can take is in diastole. The blood will actually travel back and fill into our coronary arteries in order to perfuse our heart. So then again, if we continue to follow the path of blood, you know, from the aorta, we're going to branch off into our our arteries, and then we're going to branch off into our arterioles, and those are going to turn into our capillaries and capillary beds at the end of the tissues. And then once they come out from the capillary beds, we're going to come out into our venules, which will turn into our veins, which will then work their way back either through the inferior vena cava, or if we're coming from the brain or the upper extremities, we're going to come back in through our superior vena cava. And this really gives a conceptual map or picture of the flow of blood, which ultimately is our hemodynamics. And it is important that you understand this flow, where the blood is going at different points. Like I said, know the valves that you're going through, know what vessels you're going into, and this will all play a role in determining our patient's hemodynamics. And later, when we get to talking about optimizing those hemodynamics, if you have a good understanding of this flow, then things will be much easier for you. So at this point, this concludes this lesson on hemodynamics and covering the anatomy of the heart and the vasculature that plays a role. In our next lesson, we will talk about the actual delivery of oxygen, which is the whole goal of hemodynamics.